Okay, perfect. If someone will give me a gift. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mid-Level Show. Another fantastic week where all the best mid-levels in East Tennessee, there's only four of them and they're in this room right now, <laughs> discuss medicine. So we look at Dr. Rogers, uh, doctor's note, uh, I call him Papa Doc, Papa Raj. Um, he writes on a topic every week and this week was migraines. And uh, if you're listening or tuning in right now, and if you are a migraine sufferer, sufferer cannot be a more apt description of it because it is the worst. I asked, I asked Fran if she <laughs> wanted to talk about her migraines, and she's like, "What do you want me to say? They they suck." Yes, and they, <laughs> and it's hot, and they're just so hard to deal with. Um, and so he gave us a lot of good topics and a lot of good um, talking points on why migraines happen, uh, certain triggers that, that can bring on a migraine, the different types of headaches too that are not just migraine and how there's even a misconception of sinus, sinus headaches versus migraine headaches and also treatments. Uh, there's abortive treatment. I think there's a couple important things that our listeners and viewers need to know. There's there's medications out there to keep headaches or keep migraines from coming and abortive headaches for, to get you out of a migraine. So um, any, I just wanna do first thoughts kind of on the migraine and kind of what you feel like is the, the biggest bang for our buck out of this um, out of this doctor's note. Kara, what's up for you? Kara is our nurse practitioner in the Knoxville Office of Performance Medicine. Welcome so much to the podcast and to the Zoom call. Uh, well, what do you think? I think I think um, an important thing is, as I was thinking about our meeting today, was triggers. You know, some people know what triggers them. Not drinking enough water, not getting enough sleep, stress, alcohol, uh, things like that. So identifying triggers and, and managing them. Uh, sometimes it can be hormone related, what you can and can't control. And um, so I think that's important. Uh, yeah, and too, even he said too, keeping a migraine diary or a headache diary, it sounds so base level, but that is important to know. You can think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a, a change in weather. I'm sure it's something, but, but writing down every time you get those, it's the same way whenever we eat. If you're not writing down what you eat, you probably don't know what you're eating and your memory is going to create okay. something that's probably different. Okay. Fran though, Fran and I talked, uh, it was either a week or two ago, we had the reps from a, a new abortive medication, which we'll talk about called Nurtec. And you were t discussing with me change in barometric pressure, right? Can you discuss that a little right. bit for us, Fran? Well, it, it all starts with, I've done a lot of things on his doctor's note and um, I've kept journals and I have never, I mean, I think I have never figured out what it is that gives me migraines. I'm always trying to get healthier, change as many things as I can. Anytime I get a migraine, I would do anything to never have that kind of pain again. So I just keep searching and I have started to notice that it seems to go along with the weather. And yeah. I, I used to get them a lot more frequently as a child Then I had a really good spell, which would no normally women start to get them in their childbearing years. But I had a great spell there where I didn't get migraines. And then as I've hit this perimenopause menopause, oh, they're back. So um, I've determined that it's not just one thing. I think it's a combination of like, well, maybe the barometric pressure and I had two glasses of wine and I didn't sleep well and ate mm -hmm. too much sugar. Boom. Right. I can't function. But maybe if it was just the barometric pressure and my diet was perfect and nothing else was going on, I don't get a headache. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like your, your cup fills up too much. Too many things are wrong. <coughs> and boom. The headache hits. And also too, I feel like we noticed too, um, this is unrelated, but sometimes even with like a breast cancer diagnosis, you, you, we don't, it's, there's so many lists of things that could be the causative agent of those. I mean, the list is exhaustive and you kind of look at like, well, if you had, you know, early on set of menstrual cycles, oh, it, it was probably that. Well, I had a family history. Oh, it was probably that. I feel like that's probably the same way with migraines and uh, migraine headaches in particular. Yeah. Oh, well, it's the bare mixture. It's where you live or we're an allergy capital of the United States here. It's probably that. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. Do you, do you still now, do you find stock in taking a, a headache journal? Did it help you at least eliminate some things? It helped me decide that I don't know. <laughs> which I, is, which is know, good. Honestly, this time I, I had good. cheese, 
and I got a headache this time. I didn't have cheese and I got yeah. a headache this time, you know, chocolate, cheese, wine, all these things. I can have all three of those sometimes and not get a headache. Right. And then, yeah. so it helped me realize it's more than one thing it, for, for me. Yeah. I mean, everybody's different. I think it also has a lot to do 